A very warm welcome to Jost Kadjek uh, from the Netherlands. Very warm welcome here at the multi-channel launch at the print day. Um, you are working for Be Bright. Mm -hmm. I guess it's your company. Yes. What services is Be Bright offering to your customers? Well, what we do is we help our clients with uh, innovating products or services. Okay. So either uh, innovating a new product uh, or helping them with being more innovative okay. or more creative. So either training or product or service redesign. You, you had a quite interesting speech at the print day. Um, you you s said you, we have to bring love back to the customer journey. Yes. Um, how can we do that? Well, first of all, I think that if you don't love your customer or have a sincere relationship with your customer, the business will, be, uh, will go bankrupt. We've seen some examples of companies, let's say, cheating on their, on their customers and they are having a really hard time. So I do believe that if you don't really like your customer or if you don't step into the shoes of your customer, if you don't know how they live, what they do, uh, what their emotional life is, you can't really relate to uh, your customer or your clients. And these insights will help you to innovate your product or your service. Okay. That means we need to deal with the same values in the digital world as in the normal world, like you said, trust, love. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because if I don't trust you as uh, a service provider, I will run away. It's, in, it's exactly the same in a, uh, in a love relation. If you don't trust your partner anymore, you'll leave him or her. So if I don't trust my service provider, because I think they're cheating on me, giving me the wrong information, I'll try to look for someone else. If it's my car or my mobile phone subscription provider or uh, whoever is giving me some, some service. And the good thing now is that I'm more able to switch from service providers. It's easier to switch from telecom, gas, energy, or whatever provider. How can companies fulfill this the challenge that uh, you have to bring this value back in, in a digital and an analog yes. world? Well, it is possible because um, I think it starts with what I call real interest. Are you really interested in the lives of your customer or are you just trying to push more products or services? So if you're really interested in what your customers are doing, how they are living or how they are using your product, it will give you also information back. And customers who love you will also be willing to give your information back uh, and not be scared of saying, uh, what, do, what are you going to do with my data? So if you have a proper interaction, it could be live or call center, but it could also be digital. If there's a, what I call genuine relationship, the customer is willing to provide you information that is useful for you in the business to have a better bu business performance. Um, so in that way, it's possible for service providers um, to engage in it with your customers in a different way. Mm -hmm. So it starts with real interest. Are you really interested in who's, who's your client? What do they do? And what is the next step after interest? After interest, it's, it's building, a building a relationship. And it's about uh, giving and taking information. You see a lot of new products are not designed by a design company and then pushed to the market, but they are developed in co-creation uh, with their clients. Lego, the Lego company is a nice example of that. They have asked their uh, Lego community to make new stuff with the Lego bricks. Mm -hmm. And um, what they are making, it's rated by the clients. And the highest rated they take into production. Okay. And if I have made that one, I can get a bit of a revenue. So there's even flowing money back to, uh, to the customers. So it's a really nice rethinking of how do I relate with my customers. Mm -hmm. I can give them the product, they redesign the product, do something new with it, and then I take it back into production. So it's a win-win for the Lego company and for the clients who love to play with Lego. Mm -hmm. um, do you have s some other samples? 
I'll show you. I'll show you one, and it's okay. one um, I'm used. I used in my own home actually. Um, I'm from Holland, so I like to like to ride my bikes, and I was looking for a solution to hang my bikes on the wall, and I found this clog, and um, this is the package of the clog, and I kept this package because this package talks to you. When you open it, you say, hi, I'm your clog. You know, this is a way of communicating, and it's nice. And it's also functional, functional because if the tire size is smaller than this one, don't use this clog. So this is both nice, it's well thought of, and it's functional. And if I open this one up, these are the holes I need. I just stick this on the wall, I drill two holes, okay. and then it's done. So it's functional. So clog has understood how I, as a user in my home, is, are going to use this product. So we're just um, adding information on the package, making it nice and lovable and easy. Even on this side, if you, it says, if you can read this, you might be about to drill your holes in the wrong way. I mean, it's funny and it works, you know. So this is a great example of understanding how your customer is using your product in, in the home giving the right information, so I'm in control. I mean, this is e the, it's easier than IKEA to do this. And I like it as well, the package is well designed. So this is, I think, a great example of understanding your customer, how are they using your product in their own environment, and can I make the package um, also functional as well and likable. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a great way of communicate of communication with your uh, uh, clients through a package. I would say IKEA could learn a lot of that from them Probably. because yeah. I have sometimes yeah, yeah. problems with IKEA yeah. products yeah. and all they say well. And even IKEA has already thought really well about making the instructions foolproof but still you can add on to that idea and I think this is a nice example of doing that. Did you help them to develop this? No, unfortunately package? not. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just a user. Um, uh, but I would have loved to, to help them with it. But this, the, the process they used is understanding their user and understanding the problem of the user and understanding how the user is uh, using the product in their own homes made them uh, design, redesign the package. Um. Coming back to the different channel, if I listen to you, that means the, the value in the customer journey is the um, love to the customer. Yes. Uh, that's the key issue. It's not about uh, uh, using one or the other channel. Yeah. You have to yeah. communicate this on all channels if you use them. You have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I, as a customer, I don't care about multi-channel communication. I just want to have an answer. If it's by Twitter, email, or, or a phone call, I want, I want to have my answer. So for me, as a client, I want to have the job done, and my job is getting an answer of the service provider. So I don't care if the service provider has got a multi-channel strategy or whatever smart technology behind that. I just, as a user, want to have the answer of the question I'm having. Does that mean, coming to the end, that uh, companies are sometimes are thinking too, more, too, too much about technology than on customer behavior? Yeah, I'm afraid so. And technology is an enabler. It's, a, it's enabling a better communication between the service provider and the customer. So it's not the goal, it's an enabler. And really understanding how this te technology is used by the customer, I think there you can make the difference. Yeah, Mr. Kadiak, it was great to have you here. I wish you all the best for your company and hope to see you again. Thank you very much.